What's up YouTube drummers? This is Dave Kincaid from Bortnagar and I want to thank you for viewing my YouTube channel. And uh, pretty much I'm putting together a whole shitload of videos in these next few weeks focusing on topics that I have not yet seen um, covered on YouTube. So I'm hoping to answer a lot of the questions that I've gotten um, from people I meet on the road and people that send me emails and every other thing that we can cover. Over the next couple of weeks I'm going to be posting a lot of technique videos, certain gearhead, dork, nerd uh, topics covering as far as like stick technique and how I set pedals and this and that and tom angles and every other thing pretty much that I've gotten questions on. This video today is aimed at focusing on a topic that I haven't seen covered yet on YouTube and it's regarding the Axis E-Kit triggers. Um, I've seen a lot of videos out there on how to physically install the trigger on the Axis pedal, but nobody has really covered proper calibration and pretty much aligning the triggers in to uh, pretty much help you like properly play. I know a lot of kids have problems with them at first and you'll cover, you'll go across and think that you have everything right and then you start playing and they're misfiring or they're they're cross talking or double triggering or whatever it's called but um there is a secret to I don't really know how much of a secret it is but I know that I've taught a lot of people this and I'm going to show you exactly how I calibrate my uh, e-kits so there shouldn't be any future problems and um yeah that's that and I hope that uh, we could all kind of have some fun and anybody who has any questions or uh, concerns about anything or want to know how something else is done just please shoot me an email to uh, either shoot, shoot me a message on YouTube or to my MySpace and um, hopefully we can get all this stuff covered I'm also going to be posting a lot of covers that people have requested um, a couple weird odd and then kind of songs that you wouldn't really expect to see me play but uh Hopefully it should be fun, and like I said, any questions or anything else anybody wants to know, just please shoot me a line and hopefully we can answer it. Also remember, the new Borknagar album, Universal, will be out worldwide February 22nd of 2010, and I assure you, this album is absolutely amazing, and it's not just because I'm playing drums on it. The writing, and if you're, if you're a Norwegian black metal fan, and you appreciate the different sound that Borknagar has been able to bring into music over the years and years they have been around. This is definitely uh, an album that you do not want to miss, so go pick it up and uh, enjoy. Thanks. Okay, so first thing, um, a lot of the questions I get, a lot of people ask me how I set my pedals, and Usually everybody that tries them thinks I'm out of my fucking mind, but I'm going to kind of explain something here real quick. And it, I mean, once you understand why I do it, it's pretty understandable. It's, uh, I use the Axis A longboards. I used to use Axis A's all the time, but, uh, you know, I, after I started trying these, they actually, it took about a year, but they grew on me. They're awesome. And the extra two inches of leverage, I don't really notice, but it's, I think the fact that the footboard's a little bit wider gives me a chance to use my foot a little bit more than the limited amount of uh, space on the um, standard A's. And if you can see under here, right back here, I actually have two of the axis spacers on the bottom just to lift this portion of the footboard up a little bit higher. And that kind of gives me a little bit extra kick. Um, notice how far back my beaters are. We will go to the side here. And they're probably a good 8 inches back from the head itself. And a lot of people don't really put their beaters back that far. The reason I do it is because between the leverage that I'm receiving with the extra two uh, spacers, Plus having, if you notice there, the lever glide system, uh, it's pulled all the way back. And then the spring is completely cranked. It's one of the high tension axis springs, completely uh, cranked. Now they're very hard to push down 
for people that aren't used to them. But the reason I do this is because once you're, uh, once you kind of get it going, like, see, if I put my foot down naturally, the pedal, or the beater is going to stop about an inch and a half away from the head itself, which means I just have to give it a little bit extra push in order to keep it going. And, I mean, if, you know, if you want to call it, like, a cheating method or what, I don't really care because I still play nothing but singles. The whole point with this is instead of having to sit there and really push the pedal, I'm kind of almost stopping it. Like, there's so much pressure by the time it gets to the head that it wants to come back right away. So I'm kind of, when it, as soon as it's coming back, especially in faster, like 250 to 60 BPMs and higher, those kind of speeds, it really makes it a hell of a lot easier to like keep on cruising. So, if, you know, and it, like the faster the speed, obviously the beater's not going to come back as far, but it's still, uh, it helps me out at least with my technique, and I enjoy it. And you know, it always makes for some whatever. So, let's move along to the e kits. Okay. I've met a lot of people, um, a lot of drummers, interested in finding out exactly what the hell is going on with the e-kits, and they're pretty much unsure on how to set them up the proper way, you know, they'll have a lot of misfiring and, and cross-talking and whatever when they first get going with them. And I'm going to explain this to you right now. It's actually really simple, but I wish it was something that, uh, <laughs> I wish it was something I didn't have to find out myself and you know maybe came explained with uh, instructions pretty much here's the secret see the hammer I keep the hammers tight enough that they're not gonna move obviously when you're playing but loose enough to where you can still move them with your fingers the reason behind this is <clears throat> every night when you play you uh, no matter what the venue is, you could have a dedicated riser for your kit and everything else, but no matter what, every night, still, nothing is exact the way it was the night before. There might be something that just doesn't get done right or something that changes, but n your, your drums will never be set up exactly, exactly the same, like millimeter proportion-wise, every night. So... To actually think about even locking this down is stupid because, for example, you could have it set, let me see here, you could have it set perfect, which is the way this is right now, and the next night you could come and this thing could be just off a hair because the back of the pedal board here might be, you know, there might be something under it, there might be tape under it, it might, might be a different kind of riser. You just don't know what you're going to deal with. It might be, you might be on a rug or on a floor or whatever. You don't know. So you want to keep these things set in the way that you're going to be able to quickly adjust them, even if it comes down to uh, having to do it like in between a song, which I've had to do before because I've simply forgotten to kind of line, recalibrate them back in. Normally now at sound checks, when I play live, I make sure no matter what, even before I go on stage, that these things are perfect. And here's how we do that. <clears throat> what you do is you pull back on the hammer of the uh, e-kit. You want to go and you bury the hat or the bass drum beater into your into your uh, bass drum head, but you don't want to like push it in too much. You just want to put it on there flat, okay? Then you go and you take the e-kit and you position it. Here, this is a better view for you. You position the e-kit directly on top, just touching the top of the detonator. And you can check it like this. And if you tap it and it's no give at all, then you're just directly on top. See that? Now it's perfectly set. And that's how you do it. And, you know, to be safe, uh, after I play live, I'll usually take the thing and I'll just pull it back like that. Or, well, not that far, but, you know, I'll, I'll set it like that just to remind myself the next night, yeah, I have to go and dial these things in first.
and there you go. And that's basically all there is to uh, setting up the e-kit. And you do it the same on both and which I don't play double strokes so